Artemis Racing, Road to Bermuda, in association with Ulis Nadan. America's Cup is one of the world's most prestigious and historic races of all times. Where the best and most talented sailors are pitted against each other in extreme flying catamarans that reach speeds up to 50 knots. And now Swedish Artemis Racing has just one goal. To seize history's oldest sporting trophy, the Old Mug. On board Artemis Racing is a total of five Olympic gold medalists in an international crew of sailors from Sweden, Denmark, England and Australia. Thirty-two degrees north, sixty-four degrees west places us in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on remote and beautiful Bermuda. And it is here that the 35th America's Cup will be decided in 2017. We caught up with Artemis Racing during their first official camp here at the Paradise Island of Bermuda. Definitely is like paradise. It's, uh, I don't think it's like anywhere I've ever been before. Each morning we drive to work on the mopeds, you look out of the water and see how clear and blue it is, how golden the sand is. It's, uh, it's a pretty special place. I think we're quite lucky to be, uh, be being based here for, uh, for the next couple of years up until the America's Cup. Bermuda is a British overseas territory with a population of only 65,000. The culture and architecture are a delightful mix of British and Caribbean. And wherever you are, the sea and the so typical pink sand beaches are never far away. Beautiful place. For those who haven't been to Bermuda, absolutely stunning. You come in on the plane and you look out of the window and there's turquoise water with reefs and beautiful beaches. So it really is a, a paradise island in the middle of nowhere. Um, and also perfect for sailing. Tricky for sailing, not, not perfect like San Francisco where the wind was consistent every day at the same time and strong. Tricky, but different. And every day you're thinking and enjoying the challenges of new weather. The 35th America's Cup will be battled on the Great Sound in the southern part of Bermuda, a narrow bay with unpredictable weather conditions. Artemis Racing often train here in the smaller Phantoms that just like the larger AC-45 are flying catamarans with very similar characteristics. The challenge for the sailors is to master the variances of the winds and to be able to quickly read the small and constant fluctuations. After you guys duck this down the two rounds, I'll drag this mark up halfway up to the uh, top mark, and we'll just do it. Om man jämför förhållanden från San Francisco och Bermuda så var ju allting väldigt förutsägbart på i San Francisco. Här kan allting hända. Det är olika vindriktningar, olika hastighet på vinden, och att helt enkelt förstå sig på det här. Är, det är det det handlar om. Att, att veta när man kommer in mot land, in mot say, Hamilton, hur vrider vinden. Och efter varje dag så skriver vi ner, vi noterar eh, all, allt, allt vi lär oss. Och har redan börjat på en, ja, som en dagbok då, och fyller på det hela tiden. Jag tror att allt vi behöver veta är att vinddirektionen, vinden, 
I, I think from a tactical standpoint, it will for sure be more challenging than San Francisco. San Francisco, uh, the race course, um, didn't change so much from day to day. You, you could always rely on the same breeze and you know, your strategy changed a little bit with what the tide was doing. But uh, here I think it's going to be a lot of localised puffs and a lot more oscillations in the breeze and uh, you're really going to have to have it out of the boat and make some good decisions. The more we can learn about the conditions now is obviously going to affect how the, the boat's designed, how the, uh, how the design team adapt the, the, um, the design to cope with the conditions here. So it's really important that we, we do some good sailing here to learn as much as we can about the conditions now because important critical decisions are going to be made very soon that's uh, effectively going to affect the, uh, the final boat we're going to race in the America's Cup. The costs of running a successful America's Cup campaign has escalated in recent years, not least because of the technology and engineering challenge of the new large flying catamarans. Recently, the teams voted by majority to reduce the boat size and put in more one design elements with the aim to lower costs and encourage more teams to enter. The teams got together and they tried to come up with a rule that maintained the heritage of design, but at the same time take away some of these barriers to entry. So we came up with a boat, the America's Cup class, that has what well, is being coined the, the One Design chassis. If you like, like many cars out there, underneath the uh, bonnet there are all the same, <laughs> even though we pay a lot more for <laughs> our Audis and our Volkswagens, we all know that basically they're the same car underneath. And, so that aspect of all the boats will be consistent. So that's great, that allows us to, anyone really, to get on the start line, but not be fast unless they're allowed to execute their team's design flair for aerodynamic fairings, for the trailing edge of the, of the wing and the shapes that come from that, and most importantly, for the hydrofoil designs. A direct and positive impact of the new rules was the Japanese. SoftBank Team Japan announced their entry to challenge for the 35th America's Cup in 2017. And another team is rumored to be entering. It was also these controversial and late decisions that resulted in a long-standing and respected America's Cup team, Italy's Luna Rossa Challenge with fashion magnate Patricio Bertelli as the owner, announcing that they would be withdrawing from the competition with immediate effect. I think it's really sad. I don't think it should have come there until where we miss en af traditionsbærerne i Amerikas Cup. Jeg synes, det er en kæmpe skam. Omvendt, vi har forskellige agendaer. Bertelli har et af de største modebrands i verden. Det er klart, at der skal virkelig være eksklusivitet, og det skal være noget, som ikke mange mennesker kan få. Og det er jo hans argument for at sige, nej, nu må det, nu må det slutte. Båden er for små, og vi ønsker ikke at være med i noget, hvor mange kan være med. Some critics also say that the new boats are not as extreme and that the competition would therefore lose its status. But the development of the flying catamaran is fast and tests with prototypes show that the new small boats will probably be faster than the old AC-72s. Det kommer bli roligare sailing, jag tror det kommer bli mer spännande att följa tävlingen. Det kommer bli tajtare sailing. Jag menar Formel 1-bil, man vill inte ha en stor Formel 1-bil. Alltså vi, går, vi kommer att ha en mindre båt, fast jag tror vi faktiskt kommer att ha en snabbare båt. Vi kommer att ha en häftigare båt, den kommer att se tuffare ut. Vi kommer att göra häftigare manövrar. Allting kommer att bli mycket, mycket bättre. 
I don't think they're going to be any less extreme at all. These boats are going to go just as fast as the 72s. Uh, the power to weight ratio really is what determines how fast they go and um, they're basically exactly the same. But with more functionality so, you know, they're, they're going to be a lot safer. I understand the complaints. We all want to be racing out there in spaceships, but there's only two or three people in the world who can build and pay for designing spaceships. So let's go for kind of very fast uh, aircraft, which is about what we have now, and uh, see how many more people join the starting line. Artemis Racing, Road to Bermuda, in association with Ulysse Nadin. Artemis Racing, Road to Bermuda, in association with Ulis Nadin. The boats to be used in 2017 are still to be finalized. In the meantime, teams continue to train in their AC-45s. However, Artemis Racing and Team Oracle USA have been training in their new, more advanced AC-45 turbo development boats, which provide a good platform to test design ideas and technologies. And many believe whoever is most successful on the smaller boats will have a great advantage come 2017. Well, it's, it's a very important part of the program is this early test boat and I think luckily already it's, it's proved itself on that. It's, it's proved us, provided us with um, a number of valuable lessons in, in a number of areas so it's already proved its worth. A secret number of test boats will be built at the Artemis Racing Factory in San Francisco. And the AC-45 Turbo that the team trains with in Bermuda is the first in the new series of prototypes. Developments made since 2013, when the flying catamaran made its first foray into the America's Cup, have been tremendous. I think in some aspects we're seeing these boats, the performance is better than the old 72s. I think our our turbo AC45 would probably beat our old AC72 round of course now. It is, it is very similar I think to what the, our America's Cup boat will be. In general principles like you could see the AC45 on a mooring and the America's Cup boat on the mooring and you'd really struggle to see the difference between the two of them. So. You know, we're, we're basically sailing um, two years out what the America's Cup is going to be. So uh, it's really, really exciting for us to, to know that what we have in front of us right now is pretty much what we're going to be racing in the Cup. When it comes to development, everyone wants, of course, to be at the forefront. But at the same time, nobody wants to play their trump cards now, two years before the final. The risk is large that other teams simply copy and perhaps even improve innovations. There's plenty of ideas being thrown around the design office all the time and there's always that debate of do you do, you do it now or do you wait? Um, and it's, it's, it's a funny one, that's always um, debated of how much do you show early, how much do you just run at full development speed flat out now and hope no one catches you or do you hold something back? So that could be quite interesting. The main difference between the old AC-72s and Artemis Racing's new advanced prototype is that the flight characteristics are improved. And development indeed, they continue to improve all the time. We have some more functionality on these boats with being able to adjust the rudders so we can alter the pitch of the boat while sailing so we can 
get the things up and foiling upwind in a lot less wind. You know, we've seen, you know, the AC45s, our, our turbo we've currently been sailing, foiling upwind in as little as 10 knots. And um, the AC72s needed, you know, at least 18 knots of wind speed to actually get foiling. So I think the boats are going to be more extreme than the last ones. Not sure on what the biggest changes will be, or we've got some ideas, but we're not going to say yet. <laughs> um, I think we'll just see a continual development, and I think um, the, the team that wins the cup will be the team that manages to develop continuously and takes on those lessons from the previous cup and just continues to develop relentlessly. America's Cup sailors are constantly on the move. 250 travel days a year is not unusual. Fredrik Löf's wife and their three children have joined him here for the first training camp in Bermuda. But balancing an America's Cup campaign with a functioning family life, it's not always easy. Det är ju ingen uh, lätt sak med familjen. Uh, jag tror det är det som absolut viktigast är att ha en väldigt förstående fru som backar upp en. Och, uh, hela familjen måste vara med på resan och racet också. Man måste få det stödet för att kunna själv mentalt liksom klara av det här. Uh, finns inte det så kan man heller inte prestera. Så att, uh, de är med på det. De vill att jag ska göra det här. Och, uh, Just nu är de med mig här på Bermuda och senare i satsningen så kommer vi, ja, hela, hela gängen flytta över till Bermuda. When Freddy Luf, after winning bronze at the Beijing Olympics in 2008, decided on a final Olympic effort towards London 2012, he took the whole family from Norway where they live and moved to Italy. The children started at an Italian school in a new country with a new language. Also, Freddy Luf could train full time to achieve his dreams. The plan worked. In his sixth Olympics, Freddy Luf finally won his gold medal. All the while considering the sacrifices his family took for his own sake. Ibland så känner man ju lite grann att man, ja, det är lite ens egen egoism som driver det här, som man frågasätter sig själv. Och jag, jag ser ju det på mig själv också, jag ifrågasätter mig mer och mer eh, med åren. Är detta rätt för familjen? Eh, och eh, jag frågar dem och jag försöker få deras stöd och eh, än så länge så är de, de är på min sida. Jag vill segla. Ja, jag vill också segla. Jag vill segla. Jag syns man ska ha man en dröm och man verkligen vill göra nåt så ska man ha alla möjligheter till att kunna få följa den. Och när möjligheten böj sig nå med Artemis och svensk team, där var det fryktligt svårt att säga si nej när de bankar på dörren. Jag tror faktiskt med de killarna som vi har i våran team med drivkraften i teamen så så finns det massa massa kompetens för att vi kan skriva historia helt klart. Artemis Racing, Road to Bermuda, in association with Ulis Nadan.